Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV with my NFL Fade the Public video for week 15 of the regular season this Sunday, December the 18th. Actually, not true. This Saturday, this Sunday, and this Monday, because all three days and nights have some public plays. We have the whole weekend covered for you in NFL football, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday here on this video. So no matter when you're joining us, whether it's Friday or Saturday or Sunday or Monday, you're going to get some great content here free on Wager Talk TV. Just a quick reminder, all sports is in full swing right now, and it's a great time to be an all sports client. We've been hitting over 60% for the past month and a half on all sports football and basketball combined. Also, earlier in this week, I had a huge $2 Tuesday best bet. You know, $2 Tuesday is a very special time. Once a week, one capper gets a strong best bet for $2. And I was honored to be that capper this week because I had my first 5% college football bowl best bet going this weekend. I finished number one this year in college football. It's a strong situation. My first 5%er, and it goes this Saturday. It was $2 Tuesday. I know many of you got on board. If you missed out, it's not too late because we're going to keep it up through this weekend for $2. It goes this Saturday. So whether you're watching this video on Friday or Saturday, you still have time to get on board and get that strong $2 rare 5% best bet for college football bowl action. It goes this Saturday. It's ready right now. And by the way, there's some bonus promo codes included. Not only are you getting a strong 5% college play, normally $35 for just $2. But you're also getting a discount for the rest of the college and pro football season inside and also a 90-day all-sports special if you like basketball as well. So once again, if you're joining us Friday or Saturday, go right now, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, and get that strong $2 best bet in college football. If not, if you're joining us on Sunday, hey, you didn't miss out. Sunday NFL action is powerful this weekend as well. We've been crushing it in the NFL the past few Sundays. We're going to keep that going as well. .com. All right, let's look at the public plays here. We have four real public plays this week. In the NFL, also two additional leans, games that were just a bit outside for making the cut. Let's start on Saturday afternoon with the early game at 1 o'clock Eastern. Perhaps the most public play I saw all week, and you don't have to wait long. It goes Saturday at 1 Eastern. We have three games on Saturday on NFL Network. The first one made the cut here for vi this video, and that's the Minnesota Vikings minus four against the Indianapolis Colts. Um, in fact, they made a time change on this one. Uh, Cleveland Baltimore's first on the rotation, but they bumped that to 430 because... Uh, the networks did not like this Colts-Vikings matchup, and obviously the public is not liking the Colts either, and it's understandable why. Uh, this is an Indianapolis team that's gone one and six straight up their last seven. They have failed to cover five of their last seven against the spread, and boy, are they offensively challenged. Uh, this team has scored 19 or less in six of those last seven games. In fact, they've scored 19 or less in all six of those losses. Uh, they did put up 19 against Dallas, which is their second-best offensive show in the last seven weeks. Problem is they gave up 54 points in that game last Sunday, or actually two Sundays ago, I should say. I misspoke two Sundays ago, and that's the one thing you could maybe say about the Colts here. You know, it's hard to make a case for them on the field recently, but that bye week for losing teams later in the season historically has been a moneymaker. In fact, the Colts qualify in several good ATS situations based on that premise, bad teams coming off a bye, especially later in the season. Um, so they do have that working for them here. Uh, Vikings, meanwhile, coming off a tough loss at Detroit. Um, if you recall, the uh, Vikings were a dog last week, despite being a 10-2 and straight-up team. Um, I've talked about them quite often on this video. They're the most phony, was 10-2. and two. Even now at 10-3, and three, they're one of the most phony 10-3 and three teams in NFL history, as they've been outgained on the season by nearly a yard per play, 5.5 to 6.3. And don't look now, the Colts are even on the season, 5.2 to 5.2. So even though the Colts are in terrible current form, statistically not a lot of difference here and they're coming off the bye week so we'll see if the public gets this one right or not but the public really likes minnesota on saturday afternoon at one eastern all right now let's look at the sunday games we've got um three very public plays actually two very public plays on sunday also two bonus opinions for you and then also the monday night game so a lot of details look if you're joining us late on saturday night or into sunday you haven't missed out i know you maybe you missed the two dollar play but i do have a powerful nfl best bet card lined up for sunday and i've also got a lot of information here on the video so let's get to this Sunday, week 15, December the 18th. Most public play on the board goes on the late card, actually, at 425 Eastern, and that is the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Bengals at the Buccaneers, and the public likes the road team here, the Bengals minus the three and a half. And this is really a textbook example of why fading the public does win long term. And once again, if you're new to the video, once again, thanks for watching. Welcome. And uh, those of you who have been with us for a couple of years know this spiel already. But look, I started this video Two years ago, late in the season, November of 2020, giving you the most public consensus picks each week. 
And the premise was that fading them, there would be some line value. You'd have a long-term edge. Well, we went 30, 20. We've done it ever since. And it's not on the blind. You play against the public every game. The public's not always wrong. And sometimes I agree with the public. Use it as a filter, as a handicapping factor, part of your arsenal. And if you're maybe borderline on a game, that might be enough to push you onto that team or to keep you off a game. Um, one of the reasons fading the public does work, and the main premise behind it is that you get adjusted line value, especially later in the season. These odds are very tight. The odds makers have a lot of data to go with after several months. And Cincinnati is a perfect example of what we're talking about. You know, Tampa Bay looked awful last week against a third-string quarterback out in San Francisco. Um, the Bucs have struggled all season. They've been a massive underachiever. This was the preseason favorite to win the NFC Conference when the season began at many sports books. Not only have they gone six and seven straight up, but they're three and nine against the spread. Cincinnati, meanwhile, failed to cover their first couple games. They've gone 10 and one against the number since. 10 and 3 overall. This is when you start to get line value with certain teams, kind of ugly duckling teams. And the question becomes, is Tampa really an ugly duckling or can we trust them here? This is a team that's still just one game below 500, was the preseason favorite to win the conference, and very well still might win their division with a losing record in the NFC South. Um, and the big takeaway here is that the look ahead line a week ago was going to be Cincinnati minus two. Now it's three and a half. And that's a key move because, as you know, three is the most key betting number in all of sports when it comes to football. About a 9% chance that an NFL road favorite in this price range wins by exactly three points. So the difference between plus two and plus three and a half gives the Buccaneers at least a 10 to 11% better chance of covering now. So we'll see if the additional line value makes a difference here. The public has pushed this line higher, and they like the Cincinnati Bengals on Sunday afternoon. That's a late game at 425 Eastern. All right, also going to look at the Sunday night and Monday night games for you on primetime. Both are strong public consensus plays. But before I do so, I wanted to quickly touch on a couple other games that were just a bit outside from making the cut. Both are 1 o'clock Eastern early games on Sunday, and that's the Dallas Cowboys minus 4 and the Philadelphia Eagles minus 9. Um, actually, we'll talk with the Eagles. They're a little bit higher in the rotation there. So the Eagles minus 9 and the Cowboys minus 4 were two additional cuts that just missed the cut. I call them additional public leans, if you will. They're not as strong as these other four games I've given you this week. Um, but it's interesting because here in this situation, we have two NFC East road favorites, uh, Philadelphia minus nine, Dallas minus four. And also interesting because the quarterback situations, as I do this video heading into Friday, do appear to be lined up. Fields is back for the Bears. Lawrence is in for Jacksonville. Um, but the public is fading both of those home dogs. So we'll see what happens in those matchups. Once again, both are early games at 1 Eastern. Uh, the Eagles minus 9 and the Cowboys minus 4 are additional public leans that were just a bit outside for making the cut. All right, I want to get to that Sunday night football game for you and also the Monday night game because those are both strong public consensus plays. Just a couple quick reminders. First of all, if you're joining us on Friday or Saturday, it's not too late to get a powerful 5% college football bowl best bet on my page right now. Normally it's 35, but it's a special $2 price because it was my $2 Tuesday promotion. We're extending it through Saturday. Number one in college football sides this year, and it's my first 5%er. It goes in the bowls this Saturday. Go get it right now. If you're joining us on Sunday or Monday, hey, not too late to take advantage of some great promos as well. Of course, Sunday, we always have my strong NFL three pack. We've been smoking it in recent weeks in the NFL. And then, of course, on Monday, $9 Monday as well. So check out those promotions, whether it's Saturday, Sunday, or Monday, or even Friday. Great offers right now from Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut code WT.buzz slash SM. All right, let's look at both the Sunday and then the Monday night football games. Both have public, strong public consensus leans in them. And we'll start with the Sunday night game, which, by the way, was flexed. You know, it's always flexed Tuesday. I've got that Tuesday $2 best bet. But this was game was flexed into Sunday night is it's the first game on the schedule Sunday, but it's the last game to be played, and that's because they did move it into that lineup. By the way, looking at the rotation order, I would have to believe New England-Las Vegas was probably the initial Sunday night game, so the Giants and Commanders are overtaking them. Very interesting setup here for a few reasons, but one thing that caught my eye was, if I'm not mistaken, just a few weeks ago, the public was all over um, the Giants as a home dog, and they cashed with them. In fact, it was just a couple weeks ago, uh, three, two weeks ago, December 4th, I believe we talked about it here on the video, and uh, that game ended as a tie, 20 to 20. Commanders were a two and a half point road favorite. The public backed the Giants. The public won with the Giants. So it's not a surprise that the public is coming right back with the Giants, and they're getting a little bit more line value this time as they're getting four and a half. I even see some fives out there as we head closer to the weekend. 
So the public is taking the points with the Giants plus the four and a half, maybe even a five out there. Um, and it's understandable because they cashed with them just two weeks ago. And uh, that game ended as a 2020 tie. Uh, by the way, pretty even game overall, one turnover each. Um, the Giants did give up more yards in that game. It gave up about uh, about 50 more yards total, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the passing game was the big difference for the Commanders. Uh, they threw the ball about 10 more times. But once again, a 2020 tie in New York. The rematch now in D.C. on Sunday night. And the public likes the Giants once again, just like they did a couple weeks ago. Commanders over May, one of the hottest teams in football. And keep in mind, they have not played since that giant game. That was the other interesting thing I wanted to bring up here because very strange situation. And once again, chime in in the comments below. You know I love my comments. I read every one. I reply back. I can't recall a time in the last 30 years that I've been doing this full-time professionally that an NFL team has played the same opponent in the division in back-to-back -back games. Now, obviously, it's not back-to-back -back weeks, but it's a really interesting scheduling spot. It's almost a little bit unfair, in my opinion, especially considering that the Giants had to play the Eagles, a tough divisional team in between the two games, while the Commanders got last week off. So the public somewhat overlooking that factor, in my opinion. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts. But once again, Sunday Night Football, Commanders playing the Giants for the second straight game after tying them a couple weeks ago on the road. The public doesn't care. They like the Giants plus the four and a half. All right, let's look at Monday Night Football as well. And once again, uh, I talked about the Giants, a public dog. And by the way, if you're new to this video, the public in general is 60, 65% of the time is going to be on favorites and on overs. So when we see them on underdogs and unders, um, it's more of a red flag. And the Giants obviously were a public dog on Sunday night. The other public dog this week is actually the Monday night game. And we often see this in primetime games between evenly matched teams. The public does start to go to the dogs more. And I don't think this is necessarily that the public wants anything to do with the Super Bowl champ Rams. I think the public thing to do with the 5-8 and eight Green Bay Packers. So, you know, once again... Teams aren't always public. It's just that the team, the public might not be playing the other side at all. So and I think in this game in which the average Joe will have a bet on it because it's Monday night football, it looks like the Rams are going to go off as a pretty public dog on Monday night. Now, once again, we're a few days away as I do this video heading into Friday. But once again, uh, Rams looking pretty public right now on Monday night football at plus seven. And look, I get it. It's hard to make a case for the Packers laying a touchdown against anybody right now. You know, we talked about the Buccaneers earlier being a huge fade this year. Um, they've been very bad against the point spread. The Rams are only one game better than the Bucs. They're four and eight against the spread. Packers are only about half a game better. They're five and eight against the spread. So these have all been money burners. So I guess the tiebreaker, when in doubt, take the seven points. At least that's what the public is thinking here. Just to put in perspective also how much this line has changed, the summer look-ahead line was pick them. Back this summer, you could have gotten this game at pick them. Now the Rams are getting seven points more. Uh, the look-ahead line a week ago in this game, um, if I'm not mistaken, was going to be, uh, I don't actually have it in front of me here, so I'll have to pull that one up. Here we go. We got it, um, look ahead line, the opener at least was nine. So it's actually a little bit lower now than it would have been. Uh, so very interesting situation here. We had the summer line at Pickham, the look ahead a week ago, nine, and now it's seven. Uh, regardless, the public does like the Rams, or once again, maybe I should phrase it this way, the public does not want the Packers on Monday night football. And once again, weigh in below in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on both these Sunday and Monday night games. These are the two public dogs this week. The Giants plus four and a half and the Rams plus seven. Um, LA has really struggled with injuries this year. No question about it. They've struggled offensively. They did snap that extended losing streak with a 17-16 win as an underdog against Las Vegas um, a week and a half ago in the Thursday night game. So they get almost a mini bye week here going from a Thursday and then playing the following Monday. And, of course, the Packers get the real bye week as they were off last week. So both teams coming off semi-buys and a full buy, both teams struggling. You know, I talked about this earlier with the Colts. That's usually a pretty good handicapping factor. It kind of negates itself. So the Packers theoretically qualifying the struggling team off a of bye late in the season. But you got to be careful because the Rams are off a mini buy as well. So once again, public likes the Rams plus seven on Monday night football. Uh, one thing Green Bay has done pretty well this year is move the ball on the ground nearly five yards per carry. Uh, that is something the Rams have not done well. Rams rush for only 86 yards on average, 3.7. They don't throw the ball well either. Uh, both defenses, Rams slightly above average, Packers slightly below average. Um, so statistically speaking, not a huge difference between these teams. And obviously the combined um, 9 and 16 point spread record shows why they have both struggled going 4-9 straight up and 5-8 and eight straight up a piece. All right, that's your public information for week 15. And it really is week 15 because we had a Saturday game, a Sunday afternoon, a Sunday night, and a Monday night game as the four most public plays. And also a couple bonus plays for you on the early card Sunday afternoon here on this video. 
Hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, do me a quick favor, leave it a thumbs up, a like, and also hit subscribe and hit that bell for instant alerts when these NFL Fade the Public videos go live each week. You know, normally it's up Saturday afternoon, but I, I tricked you. We got it up on Friday this week because I had the early Saturday game. I wanted you to get this information ahead of time, and that's why hitting that bell when you hit subscribe gets you instant alerts. And it's important, by the way, for next week with the holiday season and Christmas Eve being December 24th, might have a different change of schedule as well in the public video. So make sure you hit subscribe and hit the bell for instant alerts. Support the channel by hitting the like button. And most importantly, leave me comments below. Let me know your thoughts. Will you agree or disagree with the public here in week 15? Give me some of those 6.2 team teasers. We love to talk teasers. NFL is the only time a teaser is an advantage bet. Let me know the teasers you're looking at. And also some player props. Player props are great as well here in week 15 of the NFL season. And don't forget, if you're joining us on Friday or Saturday early, you hit that bell for an instant alert and got this video and if it was hot off the press, you can still get that $2 Tuesday bowl best bet for Saturday right now. 5%er, number one in college football on sides this year, and I've got my first 5%er going for the bowls on Saturday. $2 offer is still available with bonus codes included inside the offer, which gets you the rest of the college and pro football season for a discounted price. Or if you're joining us on Sunday, hey, no shame in the game. You still got a lot of information here in the video. Sunday and Monday, some great offers as well. I've got a powerful NFL lineup, a three-pack for Sunday pro football. And then, of course, $9 Monday will follow as well. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut code WT.buzz slash SM. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Steve Merrill. You know the drill, two R's, one L, at Steve Merrill on Twitter. Happy holidays if I don't speak to you next week before we do the next Fade the Public video here on Wager Talk TV. Download that Wager Talk TV app while you're on the go during the holidays. Watch all these shows on your favorite mobile device. Best of luck. Enjoy the games this weekend, and I'll talk to you again soon right here on Wager Talk TV.